Hey, it's me, Pudog3, and today I'm going to rank every scene in Monsters, Inc. ever. I mean, I guess I can say ever. I mean, there's never going to be another Monsters, Inc. 2001 ever again, so I, I, I guess I can say it. Also, I think before I start this video, I should explain myself. Like, what am I doing and why am I doing this? Well, the why is simply because my, my friend Rajan commented on my Smiling Friends ranked video, and I thought the idea was funny and could make a good video. And the what am I doing is I am going to be taking a look at every single scene in Monsters, Inc. and ranking them with a tier list. This time I'm doing a tier list so my points can be a little more subjective and not very like objective of like this is the best scene in the movie. I think this will be a fun video and if you guys do enjoy this kind of content, how about you guys give me a big fat thumbs up and comment other movies that you would like to see this style of video for. And another thing I need to explain before I dive into this video is that how I'm going to be considering a scene a scene. Because truly, the, the real definition of a scene, it's supposed to be the events that occur in one single spot. For example, if you have a character that is in an interior scene and then they walk out of a door and then you show them outside, it is now an exterior scene. And even though it could be like one minute into the movie, that is two different scenes in that movie. I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that. So I thought of a different solution. On these DVDs, there tended to be scene selections. So I figured an easier way for me to rank these scenes individually would be to look at the scene selections on the official Monsters, Inc. DVD and rank them on this tier list. This tier list it, right now is S, A, B, and C. However, I am going to change it to, to be uh, cute little cute little terms that I can put into this. So let's see, I think we can change S to Pixar's best for a we can do works well that's what we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do works well third row we're gonna put kind of filler not gonna lie and then the last row we're gonna put snooze fest i'll be so honest i think we, we need to add another tier let's add a row below and we're gonna put this one as good I guess. You know, I've noticed about all these little tier lists that everybody makes. I think that the, the, the nostalgia for these comes from those like those little charts that we would have in like first grade or whatever, where they'd move your clip down the thing. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So without further ado, how about I get into this ranking of every scene in Monsters, Inc. So the first scene is called Monsters in the Closet. Uh, this scene kind of just works as a intro to what kind of movie we are going to be watching. It shows us the urban legend of monsters being in little kids closet or like under their bed. Now I think I'm going to put this scene in good, I guess. It's a pretty iconic scene in the fact that everybody who has watched Monsters, Inc. probably remembers this scene simply because it's the first thing that you see see when you watch this movie but the only issue with the scene is that the the part that introduce you into this world is what happens next it's the scene that happens after this scene which i don't know why the scene is split up into two parts because it, it literally is just him in the room and then whenever it gets revealed to be a ruse it's it's a different scene the part where it's revealed to be a ruse however i think that deserves to be in works well i think that works really well and shows us where we are in the Monsters, Inc. world and what this whole universe is about. It shows us that they train monsters and the monsters go into the human world and scare them. Also with lines like, It could let in a child. It shows that these monsters are children fearing creatures. It also shows in this world of children scaring monsters that there is a hierarchy because uh, Mr. Waternoose says that there are better scarers than this guy. So um, I, I can't wait to see who those guys are. Scene three, morning workout. Morning workout is kind of just an introduction to Mike and Sully. I think this scene also goes under works well. It shows the dynamic of Mike and Sully and shows the closeness of their friendship and what we're gonna be what we're gonna be looking at for this this whole movie. And I think the best part about this scene is it ends with the debut of the new Monsters Inc. commercial that shows you that Mike Wazowski he has an eye for himself. I, I, I think that's the best way to describe Mike Wazowski's personality. He's kind of just he's very full of himself. Next, scene four is called Monstropolis. Also in this scene is where we find out there is a scream shortage and that's why we shouldn't be driving Mike's car because in this world all they use for electricity is screams the screams of children I, I in any other context I feel like that's horrifying but in Monsters Inc it's it's quite charming along their way to work we see this world of monsters and we see 
what kind of creatures they have. And I know when I've been ranking this movie so far, I've been like doing tricks on it, but I think I'm gonna put this one in works well too. These opening scenes are very good at establishing the world and movie that we're about to watch. So I think works well is a good place for all of these scenes. Next up is scene five called Monsters Inc. This scene is about them finally walking into work. And here we find out that Sully is the number one scarer and he has been for a lot of months. Bro is the best in that locker room, on the scare floor, even on commentary. Nobody, Nobody can, can touch, touch him. Me. However, compared to the walk to work, I think this scene establishes a lot less and I'm gonna put it in good, I guess. Now we're gonna go to scene six, which is called Randall, which is the introduction of Randall in the locker room. Hot take, I like the Randall scene. I think it's a good way to introduce the movie's villain. It comes off very natural, and I think that Randall in the scene, Randall, is very good. So hot take, I'm gonna put this one in works well, because I think this scene works very well at showing the main antagonist of the movie. Now it's time to get to a very important scene, which shows the scare floor and how these monsters get into the human world. It starts off with the introduction to Roz, who is a great character, guys. Come on, we gotta we gotta acknowledge we gotta acknowledge our tribal chief, Roz Slug. What is her name? Roz, like slug woman? I don't know. I don't know. And then we have a montage of the assistants getting ready for the scarers to come in. And when the scarers do come in, everybody has seen this scene. The scene where the, the scarers walk into the scare floor in, in the reference to Armageddon. And then once the scarers start scaring, there's that crazy montage with the da 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 I'm probably not singing it the best, but I do think that this is one of Pixar's best. This is without a doubt an iconic scene in Pixar's history, and honestly, it's one of the things that makes Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. Of course, another memorable moment in Monsters, Inc. is the introduction to a 2319, which is scene eight. I don't know, this scene basically just works as an introduction to the CDA, aka the Child Detection Agency. They attack this guy who has like horrible luck. He keeps getting human stuff all over him, and he keeps getting like murdered. This poor guy. Since this scene kind of just works as another introduction to another character, I have to put it in one of the good categories because it introduces a vital aspect which is the CDA, so I think I'm gonna put it in good, I guess. Next up is scene 9, which is end of the day, and this is kind of just them clocking out, and Mike forgot to file his paperwork again. So, uh, Sully says, hey, I'll go do it for you, because Mike has a very big date tonight, guys. Overall, the scene is very short, and if I have to be mean to any of these scenes, it's, it's this one because it is is in fact filler so I'm going to put it in kind of filler not gonna lie next up we have scene 10 which is boo this is a very important scene in the movie and I think it works really well to establish boo as a character it shows her chasing Sully all around Monsters Inc and foreshadows the huge problem that will happen now that Sully has accidentally let a little creature, a little creature child into this universe. Sully is, um, he's kind of a, he's a war criminal. Sully is a war criminal, I think, in this scene and that's what really what it is and I think I'm just gonna put it in works well. Next up is scene 11, which is Mike Wazowski's date, otherwise known as Harryhausen's. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's, uh, it's just how it's gonna get said in this video. It kind of all goes wrong because Boo shows up and kind of terrorizes these little monsters. I think this is a very good scene showcasing why these monsters are in mass hysteria. However, this is kind of already shown in 2319. So besides like the giant explosion on Harry Hosen, it's, it's kind of a little, a little fillerish, but it's very important to bring Boo to Mike and make this a duo's problem instead of just being all on Sully's shoulders. So I think it's not too much filler, but it also is kind of a rehash of things that we've already done, showing again how dangerous the CDA can be. I'm gonna put it in good, I guess. Next up is scene 12, which is back to the apartment. If there was a scene that really showed these children fearing monsters at their peak, it would be this one. They were afraid to touch this thing because they think they're gonna like die or something. I think this works well and also guys, it is establishes the fact that laughter is two times more powerful than screams and that's very vital to the ending of this movie spoilers I guess next up is number 13 which is bedtime uh, boo gets a little sleepy eepy in this scene 
and she is ready for bed. This is also the famous Pixar scene of Sully throwing Cheerios into Boo's mouth, and I'm not gonna lie, as a kid, I always wanted to like do this. I've always wanted a big blue monster to throw Cheerios into my mouth as I just colored. That's gotta be the life. But before we learn very vital information that if you haven't realized already that Randall is Boo's monster. But I think, um, honestly, just because she goes to sleep in this scene, I have to put it in snooze fest. And it makes me so sleepy. It makes me so sleepy EP and I just want to go night night next up is sneaking boo into work and I'm not gonna lie this scene is maybe like a minute or two long they kind of just sneak boo into work feared that they're gonna get caught by the CDA see mr. water noose and bring boo to the locker rooms and there's also not a lot of like memorable bits so I think I kind of just have to put this one in filler not gonna lie I'm not saying it's a horrible scene it's just it's a transitionary scene to get them from point a to point B but just as a ranking to everything else it's gonna go right there okay next up is scene 15 otherwise known as potty break this is the one where Boo's, um, she's in the bathroom and Sully's waiting for her outside. This is also another pretty iconic Pixar moment, but I don't, I don't really know if I feel comfortable, uh, uh, ranking a little girl using the restroom in my overall tier list. So I'm not going to focus on that part. I'm going to focus on everything else that happens in this scene. Uh, Mike goes sweet talk Roz and gets his finger slammed into the, uh, into the, the little window thing. And another thing I really do like about this scene is that Sully starts treating Boo like his daughter. Like he's already like taking good care of her and stuff but this is the scene where he like chases her around the the men's locker room as like a game overall it's a pretty impactful scene and i think it is good i guess next up is scene 16 aka randall's plot uh this scene is kind of just mike sully and boo hiding in the bathroom after randall and his assistant walked into the men's locker room and while they're hiding they hear randall start saying that he is gonna do like whatever it takes to break the overall scare record i'm not gonna lie all this scene does is scare mike and sully a little more and they're kind of scared already so i'm gonna put this in kind of filler not gonna lie next up is scene 17 uh, aka the wrong door aka the scene where mike sings with that thing back where it came from or so help me bomb 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 um yeah i like that bit and nothing else happens in this scene i'm gonna put it in pixar's best because i really like it scene number 18 is called mike on the run and fun fact if you start the scene exactly where this scene starts in the dvd it starts with mike running but overall it kind of just leads to uh mike cutting a deal with randall because this is where randall realizes that mike knows where the kid is and at this moment mike thinks that everybody just kind of wants this kid to go back to the human world and that everybody just needs to be done with this so he takes randall's off offer on going get her door so we can get rid of this kid and send her back to the human world and i think that is another very good scene scene 19 is next and this is the trash compactor scene where sully almost like cries because he thinks that he accidentally killed boo and he starts literally tweaking in the thought that she could have died however she's not in the trash compactor she's with the kid that screams mike wazowski and then bites his hand i think because of that um honestly i'm just gonna i'm gonna put this in pixar's best it shows how compassionate sully really has become about this kid and if he was somebody like Randall that just witnessed this kid die, I, I'm pretty sure Randall, if he watched this kid die, he would not care. Next up, we have scene 20, which is Mike kidnapped. Again, a lot of these scenes, I don't, I don't really know why they're divided into scenes. It's kind of just Mike gets kidnapped and taken to Randall's little lair by accident. I think this is a good scene. So I think the highest I can put this one is, is good because it adds a little more suspense into the movie because now it has to be Sully and Boo to the rescue to go save Mike. Now we have scene 21, which is the Scream Extractor. In this scene, we are exposed to Randall's real plot, which was to kidnap Boo and make her scream a lot and that's how he breaks the overall scare record and gets rid of this scare shortage by using an infinite amount of boo screams to power monstropolis so uh, i think that works really well because it shows how evil this guy really is because he wants to kidnap a child next up is sully scares boo and uh this one is a very very impactful scene this whole movie we've been building sully and boo's relationship and showing them as kind of a father-daughter duo and this is the moment where he finally does the one thing monsters are supposed to do and scares her. This scene must have been horrifying for Sully and then it is probably also more world shattering because in this scene we are revealed that Mr. Waternoose is on Randall's side and if that wasn't enough it breaks Sully's world even more because they are banished 
to the Himalayans. Just all that lore stuff, man. We've got to we've got to put that one in Pixar's best. I don't know about you. I, I I think Sully scares Boo is in Pixar's best. Yeah, Banished is the next scene, and I'm so happy they kept this as one scene because it's the whole scene where Mike and Sully literally start hating each other because now they are banished and can never return to the monster's world. I think this is again another one of Pixar's best. Next up is Sully rescues Boo, and not only does this scene involve him rescuing Boo, it also shows him and Mike making up because Mike follows him from the Himalayans back to Monstropolis. And I think this scene works well. All this scene is trying to do is just go get all the good guys back on each other's side. And I think that works really good. Boo isn't mad at Sully anymore. Mike isn't mad at Sully anymore. And everybody holds hands and sings Kumbaya. I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry, Jennifer Tilly. This next scene, Schmoopsie Poo, is just kind of Mike recruiting Celia to get on their team by telling her the kind of situation we're in. Um, I, I'll be honest, we didn't really need Celia on this team, but we did get more Jennifer Tilly. So I can't put it in anything higher than Snooze Fest. Okay, now we're getting to one of my favorite scenes in Monsters, Inc. And of course, you know it's gonna be in Pixar's best. One reason why I like this scene, not only it is the total extinction of Randall, and he gets sent to like that, that swamp area where they, they think he's an alligator and they try to kill him. It also shows where they keep all the doors, which is the door vault. All this scene made me want to do is want to go to there. I want to go to there. I want to go to the door vault. Yeah, it looks kind of horrifying from really high, but I'm not gonna lie, the time I rode Mike and Sully to the rescue in uh, Disney California Adventure, that is like the best room in there, the door vault. Why they never make a, a door vault roller coaster where there you ride on one of the doors and you just go through the door vault? That could have been awesome. And we could have showed Mike and Sully just beating the hell out of Randall. I mean, that's kind of awesome. We're gonna do door vault the ride. And I'm just saying, this would be a great ride. We need to, we need to do this. We need to do this. We you ride in a door. You ride in a door. Each of them are themed to like different doors. I think that would be really good. You could add in some Disney references. Why haven't we done a door vault roller coaster? Huge editing note here. Um, uh, by the way, I recorded this sometime in like June or July ish whenever I was making all those smiling friends videos and um uh, Guys guys, I predicted uh, this ride because a few weeks later at D23 Disney announced that there was going to be a door vault roller coaster. So I, I somehow got my wish granted just like that. However, uh, it's kind of like a monkey's paw wish because there is one caveat to this thing. And yes, I got my wish of finally getting a door roller coaster, but no one knows where it's going to go. So if you touch Muppet Vision 3D, you will feel my wrath. Disney! Next, we have Tricking Water Noose, which is where he says the famous line of, I could have a thousand children if I let this company die. So I think I'm gonna put Tricking Water Noose in Works Well, because it works well as a big climactic finish to this Water Noose story. Not to mention, this is where we reveal Roz as the leader of the CDA, which like, where the hell did that come from? That's crazy. Now, since it's Roz, she does allow Mike and Sully to say goodbye to Boo. And I'm not gonna be an idiot. This is where he says goodbye to Boo, and it is like one of the most heart felt moments ever. So of course, I'm not going to be a little negative Nancy. I'm going to put this in Pixar's best. Now then again with the laugh floor, it's not as an impactful as a scene. I think it's great that Sully learned that these humans have feelings too, and maybe we shouldn't just be scaring them just for our benefit. So him and Mike change it to the laugh floor, and basically it's kind of like a flip-flop. We've got the, the scarers taking a back seat and being the assistants, and the assistants like Mike kind of go and get to do their comedy routine. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be the assistants, because sometimes there are the assistants that aren't very funny. Like Glinglorp, he was my monster growing up. He did his stand-up routine every single time he came to visit me, and he was not very funny. Um, I kind of just laughed out of pity, and uh, it, I, I felt bad over that. He was a magenta monster. Just felt bad, man. Oh, the laugh floor? Oh, I'm gonna put that in a uh, works well. And then, of course, we have the final scene called Kitty. And if there was anything that was a build throughout the entire thing, it was it was that Mike stops being so egotistical and he does something for Sully. He reconstructs Boo's door and Sully is finally reunited with Boo. Pixar's best right here, man. Pixar's best. We gotta put that in the top. But yeah, that's my uh, ranking of these scenes in Monsters, Inc. <sighs> that was a very odd experience doing that entire thing. I've never ranked every scene in a movie before. Thank you, John for the suggestion and again if you guys want me to do this exact same thing to a different movie I might change it up a little bit but if you guys want me to do this exact same thing to a different movie like this video and leave some suggestions in the comment section down below of what other movies you guys might want me to do and also now that I've explained every scene give your top five favorite scenes in the comment section down below but yeah that's about it for this week I'm sorry I'm becoming the rankered and I'll see you guys next week